of the hills as I first saw them. The Black Hills, Dakota Territory, a land ceded by treaty a short time ago to the Sioux Nation, who owned it in the first place. A year ago, 1875, a yellow dust was discovered that had the power to bring men streaming to the edge of these hills, made them hate the cavalry that barred these would-be treaty breakers from the promised land. I was a part of one of those columns, a column of misfits, commanded by a man who was even stranger than the men who took their pride in him, Captain Webb Calhoun. Detail, follow up! The gold rushes Lieutenant Cutter ordered out yesterday. They haven't budged an inch. You expect they would? I expect orders to be obeyed. Those orders were made to keep the hair on people like them. Sue? There's no Sue's around here. I got a nose for Sue's. You got a nose for a whiskey, Charlie. Get off your horse. We're going to lose another scout, something tells me. Something tells you, something tells you. Any conjo suit? The Pactolus clan. All right, they're around. What are they waiting for, Indian lover? To be told what to do? I got a feature. Sacrifice! Yes, sir. Take A Troop's ex civilian scout to the rear of the column where he belongs. Look, I take government pay, but I don't have to take no rousing around from a tin soldier. Yeah, oh, now, Charlie, all the captain wants is for you. You like he's got you! He's ready, sir. Corporal Dolan, you and Muro ride with tail and Sally. I guess. Gallop! Whoa! What's your name, mister? Ledbetter. Jave Ledbetter. You're not over fond of your wife and son, are you? What do you mean? There's a treaty, mister, that says that this is Sioux territory. Now, maybe you don't care anything about treaties, but maybe you do care what happens to your family if a Sioux catch them in here. We didn't move out yesterday when some whippersnapper lieutenant told us to, and we're not moving out today. The yellow stuff in that creek back there tells us we're going to stay right here for quite a spell. Answer me this. How do they better themselves with the top of their head gun? We can't go back to the boundary and start waiting again. We ain't got nothing left to wait with. You care even less about your family than I thought. Coming into the hills without rifles. We got rifles. I didn't see any. Two brand new Henry repeaters. Repeaters are all a Sioux need. Mind if I look at them? Get them, Ken. Sewer keeping for the middle and back hills, and you know it. Jay, the rifles ain't there. Ain't there? Where else could Your you? son wouldn't be telling a little fib, would he, mister? You go get them rifles like the captain said. Steady, Sergeant. He's not lying. The rifles are gone. You had a dog, didn't you? Where is he? Tanner? He'll catch up with us. He missed breakfast, but he likes to root around. He won't catch up. We found this through his throat back by the creek. You think we're being scared off by any sneaking Indian face? Your time's up, Ledbetter. Throw these two in the wagon and put a guard on them. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Odds are kind of uneven, ain't they? We can do our own driving. Let's get gone before he slaps hand irons on us. Oh, 
four horse town swelled to the bursting point with rushers who'd come for the gold, but found a handful of cavalry instead. You have what, Joe? Who you chasing out of the hell of the game? Give the army back to the Indians. What Indians? Glad to see you too. How long do you think you're going to keep us out of there, dark faces? There's dark faces. There's dark faces. Close up. Close up. May take some doing, Sergeant. Keep the detail in hand while I'm inside this. I'll do just that, sir. Try to make a single thieving red stick look like a whole war party. Pick that thing up. I ought to make you drink it. Sure. Sure, and you could. Then I'd be sick like those people out there. You saw it as get us all sick one way or another. Keep those horses in line, do you hear? These are Dakota mosquitoes, a lot of wine and no bite. What are you scared of, dog faces? And ghost Indians? What's there to be scared of? The Yankees, Sue. Keep your mouth to yourself, Murray. Go play in your toy fort. We'll take care of the Indians. Any we see. <laughs> Leave off that gun, Murray. Would you like to try that again, mister? So I can break every bone in your body? Hello, Webb. Looks like I bought it down at the wrong time. Looks like you did just that. Such a thing as propriety, Colonel Under. <laughs> Not for people like us. That's for West Pointers like Calhoun. I'm only a gentleman by act of Congress. You'd better leave, Leah. I'll speak to you later. Stay where you are, pretty. You'd like to smash me right between the eyes, wouldn't you? Remind me to look up at the manual just how many years I'd get for smashing my commanding officer between the eyes. Leah is not your personal property. She has a right to be with anybody she wants to be with. That's right, Colonel. Even with me when she wants to be. Yeah, that's right, Jordan. As long as she works for you. And since you are working for me, Leah, aren't you due out on the floor? Colonel Longer is right, Webb. I'm not anybody's personal property. A good officer captain always knows when he's licked. Didn't they teach you that at West Point? Hello, sweetheart. How about a drink? Never mind following her. She's working for me, remember? That's part of her job. And nothing's going to happen to her. I have a personal interest in Leah's welfare. You know, I keep thinking you knew her somewhere before she came to work for me. Why is it you won't tell me who she is or where she comes from? Better equipment than the Army has. That's your fine government for you. Always not taking care of its fighting men. That's what I came in to see you about. Two more of those got in the hands of the Sioux today. The Sioux that no one ever sees except Captain Calhoun. Listen, my business is furnishing supplies to the white man, and there's nothing you or any treaty can do about it. You don't think those Sioux are invisible any more than I do. You'd like to see the army get mixed up in an Indian war, and the hills that open up, gold rushes that swarm in, there'd be lots of money. All of a sudden, your business booms. You of all people shouldn't mention war with such an authority. This won't be any close order Johnny shoot me nicely war. This will be hide and seek, slaughter out of nowhere. The Sioux kind of war. I repeat, you're not an authority on war. You missed the late war between the states, didn't you, Captain? That's right. I missed it. Keep clear of the column, Ray. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. Oh, I just want to ask a question, Sergeant. Who's going to take care of the lead betters? The Army? <laughs> Oh. 
They don't welcome you here any more than you welcome them in the hills, do they, Captain? Return? Let's go! Right in front of the line, plot! Oh! Oh, you funny, you funny, funny. Well, anyway, the book says we don't travel on horses. What book? What book? Any book, Mother Goose. It says they're right on page, which I forget. The army travels on his stomach. Hey, Murray, you southern boys found out about horses. I heard when you surrendered there wasn't a horse left in the whole Confederate army. By the time Appomattox got around, we didn't have much of anything left. Starving men don't use horses to ride. I get a mouth made of rubber. And it's the first time I ever heard it tell the truth. Tell the truth, tell the truth! Oh, my man, second best friend of the horse! Just a minute, Mr. Cutter. Yesterday's report, you signed a statement saying that you ordered a party named Ledbetter out of the hills. Yes, sir. They started to pull out as I left. They didn't go, Mr. Cutter. They stayed there where they didn't belong. If the Sioux would cut them down, it'd be nobody's fault but yours. Yes, sir. If it happens again, I'll mention it in dispatches. That's all, Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. Hey, you. Indian lover is right. <laughs> Everything cozy and safe for the poor Sioux. Why didn't you tell Cutter to go out there and sing him a lullaby? Rock him to sleep. One of these days, I'll rock those Sioux to sleep when I find a big enough rock. What's the matter? This worry you? Don't commanding officers go around with their blouses unbuttoned at West Point? I'd like to see you for a minute. I want Charlie Grass transferred for my troop. You'd like to see me for a minute what? I'd like to see you for a minute right now. You'd like to see me for a minute right now what? Right now, sir. That's better, Mr. West Point. Well, then I don't want to forget those little formalities you learned at school, do we, Captain? Message from Corporal Arian, telegraph officer. Says replacements and enlisted personnel are due in tomorrow. Starting by. Yes, sir. I don't like sergeants. No, sir. I was one myself for eight years. So I know that sergeants hate officers. Yes, sir. I mean, no, sir. Now I know how officers hate sergeants. Seems to be regulation, so I hate sergeants. Especially sergeants who can't remember who's in command around here. All right, for a couple of months, Captain Calhoun had to post. But I've been here long enough for even a sergeant to know that I've taken over. So if I catch any sergeants, and I hate sergeants, they're going to report to Captain Calhoun before he makes it to me. I'll tear his chevrons off so quick his arm will come with him. Yes, sir. Get out of here.
You liked having him come up to you instead of me, didn't you? You think of yourself as a... What's it called? <laughs> Instinctive officer. Now, let me tell you. At West Point, they hand you out a commission for getting high marks on paper for four years. Took me nearly five times that long. Learning mine from the bottom up. But I learned how to get things done, Calhoun, no matter what. Never mind any fussing with apple-cheeked ethics. Well, what are you standing there for? Waiting to see the colonel, sir. I'll send for you. Right now, the colonel is busy. Yes, sir. On what, Sergeant? Why is it, sir? Meaning no disrespect, sir. Nobody wants to be a second lieutenant. All right. I guess every day, Taylor, it's been out on a day's patrol with you has had to listen to this one. Let's have it, Sergeant. Well, sir, now I'll give up a day's pay of a ball. A private wants to be a corporal, a corporal wants to be a sergeant, but does a sergeant want to be a second lieutenant? Captains are right glad to be captains, majors and colonels glad to be majors and colonels, but even a second lieutenant don't want to be a second lieutenant. Looking for something, sir? Yes, a good answer, Sergeant. Always want to be looking for something, sir, on patrol. Looking here, looking there, oh, looking there. Look over there, Sergeant. Smoke. It was much smokier ten minutes ago, sir. Let's get over there. Detail? We don't want to run headlong into anything, sir. By your leave, there's a way of doing it, sir. Murray! As long as nobody wants to be a second lieutenant, sir, we better take care of what we have. You come along slow. We'll give you the sign to come in. didn't like. They need rifles too bad to burn them. Unless this is a rifle of somebody they wouldn't even spit on. Well, there's no way of telling who it was from that. Somebody the Sioux didn't have no treaty with. Take a look at these wagon tracks, Mr. Cutter. A wagon come in here today and was turned around and sent back toward the boundary line. And from the looks of these footprints, the man that guided that wagon in here didn't go back. I don't think they took him prisoner. Well, they didn't bury him around here. What did he do? Disappear into thin air? Well, he... Charlie Grass. Get the body down, Sergeant. We'll take it back to the post. We better not touch him, sir. They didn't do nothing to the whites that Charlie guided in here. You see, Charlie's three-quarter Sioux. They just took care of one of their own that had betrayed them. You notice he still got his hair? So when he walks around the hereafter, everybody will know he wasn't even worth scalping. Mr. Cutter, we don't want to monkey around with any of their superstitions. Let's leave him be, sir. He took government pay, Sergeant. We are responsible. We'll take him back. I 
sure hope that was a fox I heard barking instead of one of them young bucks that's already skedaddled back to tell them what we're doing. time sending for me. You've been busy for 24 hours? Is that the way they taught you to address your CO at the trade school? Sir, Captain Calhoun reporting to commanding officer, as ordered. Well, that's better. Yeah, the way it sounded like you might be talking to a man in the ranks. Pretty fair likeness. Think I've changed much in 12 years? I didn't know you 12 years ago. What you mean is that your kind didn't know my kind was alive. Unless we fail to snap to attention every time a West Pointer came within 50 feet of him. Maybe you think I'm not right for this command. Because I was a sergeant when you were a lieutenant. Now I outrank you by two grades. Maybe I don't think about it at all. That's a lie. It eats at you inside. Go ahead. Tell me what you really think. I think there weren't any politicians out here. Care to make that plain? It's pretty plain to me. You've done a lot for the politicians. Now you're a lieutenant colonel. And they want the hills opened up, but never mind a little thing like a signed treaty. So they sent you out here. <laughs> I don't care a bubble in a dirty river what you think of me. The big point is I don't like the way you let your schoolboy ideas stand in the way you're doing a man's job. These are Indians, Calhoun. That we signed a treaty with. What are you going to do? Stand here and uphold a treaty that stops the progress of a whole nation? We're moving out to the Pacific Ocean. You think we're going to skirt around the Black Hills? We're going to have to battle it out sooner or later. The sooner the better. Not as long as the patrols keep the gold rushes out of their hills. And headquarters wants the patrols kept up. Even you can't ignore that order. Who do you think you are, a one-man army? The army doesn't need men who think they're indispensable. What's more, the army doesn't want them. Maybe it's just the politician's part of the army that doesn't want it. Get out of here. Get out of here before I place you under arrest for insubordination. You haven't told me why you sent for me. Replacements doing this evening. Only two for you this time. Two more of the same? Transferred because I got in trouble. That's right. Not gonna waste any good men on you, Calhoun. I'll need all the good ones when I hit the Sioux. You can spend your time teaching this kind how to play. Ring around the treaty and I'll never miss him. That's all. Charlie Graff, sir. Let a party out. Mr. Cutter, you will give me the answer to Captain Calhoun's question. Charlie Graff, sir. Let a party out in the Sioux killed him. Killed him? Well, there goes your treaty. Killed a government scout. Calhoun, I want this entire garrison ready for a combat patrol in half an hour. Why do you leave, sir? What happened to the party Charlie Graff took out? The Bedfords. They're back in Dawson, sir. We checked on our way back. Sioux have violated the treaty in any sense of the word, sir. They permitted the Bedfords to return across the boundary. Charlie Grass resigned from the service last night. Nothing in the treaty says they can't punish one of their own people if they're convinced he's betrayed them. Still want the garrison turned out, sir? Grab those hats! All of you! Look like soldiers. And get rid of that thing! Bury it somewhere, anywhere! Outside the post. All right. When I call your names, you replacements take your places with the non-coms representing the companies you're assigned to. Shipley, Fourth Ohio, Troop B. Feature. Not bad. 
Might even make fighting soldiers out of them. Hey, yeah, but the way it's done out here, the first man to get killed gets made a corporal. As soon as I get a medal, I am going to pin it on you. Funny stains above and beyond the color beauty. First Pennsylvania, Company D. Wells, First Vermont, volunteer for active duty, Coop D. Emmers, Third Cavalry, Arizona Territory. Transferred for the best interests of the service. Regimental champion box fighter, were you? Laid down for the gamblers, did you? It's gonna be nice having the likes of you with us. Priority, 26th Cavalry, New York. Transferred for the best interests of the service. Now, ain't it gonna be nice having a habitual inebriate for our guardhouse? Listen, you... Sergeant Yes, sir. Attention! At ease, man. Confine yourself to reading the report. We're not interested in your personal version of these men's records. So that ain't my version. The replacement sergeant told me about these two. Does your list sheet mention a man named Loyalty who was decorated for heroism in four separate battles in the war between the states? No, sir, it does. Does it mention a man named Emmers? He saved a scout patrol by crawling alone into an Apache ambush. Killed three of them with his bare hands. What's the matter with that replacement sergeant? He's worse than an old woman for talking out of turn on things he don't know nothing about. Sign my order and Emmers to my troop, Sergeant. Dismiss your details. Yes, sir. Emmers! Rowdy! Troop A! That's me. Company A. Details! Dismiss! Four separate battles? Well, you see, I uh, joined up late. Did you get the message Miss Wilson wants to see you, sir? Thanks. That trick of yours of making them feel important. Worse every time. Thing is, you go about it different each time. You even had me believing about those four battles and bare hands. Army tactics, Sergeant. Strategy varies with the situation. Mm -hmm. I didn't think a private talk would do any good with those two. And now they're gonna knock themselves out living up to the reputation you gave them. You've got yourself two more good men, sir. Only one, Sergeant. Emmers, according to the report, specifically requested a transfer to the Black Hills garrison. You know what that means. Yeah. Off limits passes for these men until midnight. Yowie! Who was that? He seemed to come from... Th me, sir. He didn't seem to, it did. You know, I think you'd be doing the troop a favor if you'd come to attention. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're entirely welcome. Corporal Don, then. I wonder if you'd mind shutting your life bit mouth! All in order, sir. We're marching off with little bull, and this is the way we go. Forty miles a day on beans and hay in the regular army, oh. Each mile you ride, you're sure you'll your best is getting sore. There's nothing like going back to ride about ten thousand more. The drums would roll upon my soul, and this is the trial we go. Forty miles a day on beans and hay in the regular army, oh, oh. The sergeant's name was Callahan, he read the testament. But when he yelled his orders out, no holy words were met. And when he said to Hogan, just to move your horse afoot. But then that Hogan moved a mile on the tape of the sergeant's boot. The drum would roll upon my shoulder, this the style we go. Forty miles a day, I'll be the You know the type of men you're going to find in there. These gold rushers have money enough to buy a drink with. They think it's our fault. They don't like us. As long as you tend to your business, they'll tend to theirs. Keep it in mind. All right, sir. Detail! Bastards! <laughs> Tonight. A piece of the bark. Wait a minute, you can have him later for dessert. Right now we want whiskey. You sold your boys got money for the whiskey? 
everything to wear these uniforms to keep warm, we get paid for wearing thirteen dollars a month. Kind of thirteen. Continue pouring them, Milo. It's forty miles a day on whiskey and hay in the regular army. Oh, oh, oh. Decorated for heroism in four major battles. That's really something, Mr. Ryhart. But, but, but I, I guess it is. Did you fill up on that before each time? Well, now, a real brave man don't need this stuff to perform feats of courage, you know. Oh, I don't know. I was kind of too young for the war, but my brother wasn't. He was killed early. I guess that's why I joined up here. Sort of like serving out his hitch. He never was decorated like you. Maybe if he filled up on He didn't need it. Like I said, it didn't hurt me. Well, I can take it or I can leave it. Look. Really Tell me about how you got your decorations, Mr. Ryhard. Well, it was at the Battle of Gettysburg, Bird, uh, some bird. There was Johnny Rambo coming at me, not more than two or three dozen. And there was... There was I. Yeah? Good evening, sir. I take up Miss Lee is at home. Yes, sir. I was just... Never uh... mind what you were just. You're a new officer, Mr. Cutter. For some reason, the wives on the post insist on greeting new officers with a hop. Yours is due in a few nights. You better be catching up on your beauty sleep. Yes, sir. I was just on my way to get one at the saloon. Get one what at the saloon? Beauty sleep, sir. Back in Massachusetts, that's all they'd let us drink until we were 21, and I got to like them. It's ginger water, sir. Mixed with a finger of rum, a finger of brandy, a half finger each of rye and gin. Mr. Cutter, get back to the post. Get your beauty sleep. Without the fingers. Yes, sir. Who is it? Who are you expecting? Unger or Jordan? Hello, Will. Even a kid like Cutter is better than they are. Did you come to criticize? Yes. We're not marrying. <laughs> there was a time you would have married me. No, they never was. Not since you've come out here. You can't be younger. You wouldn't be crazy enough to let it be younger. Wouldn't I? Well, I wouldn't let you. Jordan's my boss now, Webb. A very tolerant one. He understands a lot of things. He's my kind. But what do you... The kind they think of me as being out here. Don't talk like that. Others do. What's happened since you've come here that makes you want to be with that young lieutenant rather than... Mr. Cutter. He just came over to ask me... Ask you what? You wouldn't understand. I understand there isn't a gold rusher, a soldier, a two-legged male in the whole territory you wouldn't rather be with than me. What did you come out here for? Two thousand miles to this hole if you don't want us to be together. Because I thought it would be different. Different from Morris. But it isn't. It's worse. You remember Morris to the web. You don't forget the place where you grew up. I look at these a lot. They're not much just as pictures, are they? But they're not just pictures. See? There's your house, way up on the hill. The wonderful, wonderful Calhoun Hall. And here's my father's place down at the bottom of the hill. Where we met. Remember. Also a wonderful house. But not a manor house. And right there ran something you never could see. Because there wasn't a railroad. The tracks were there and I was on this side of them. No matter what you said. When you went north to West Point, I thought I'd shrivel and die. And then you said you'd send for me when you got your commission. Only it seemed a war intervened. Funny this loyalty you have for an army, the thought of you as a southerner first and an officer second. Sent you out here to the border because they wouldn't believe you'd fight against other southerners. Out here. 
There may never be a railroad. But the tracks are here, too. That's crazy, Leah. The war did away with all those things. You've got to believe that. You don't appreciate me, Donlan. I've got to be appreciated. And in my mood, I could only be appreciated by a Tennyson. All right, I'm going to read this. The glorious French of the service, the cavalry young, wishes you to have a drink with it at the bar. Am I going to go read it? The bar says it's a bar in the drink. It's part of the name. But then, look. You're really going to be appreciated. I think so. These are people that know where the little yellow stuff in the hills can be found. Why? You might want to talk to them. Well, they're pretty decent people. They don't talk to soldiers. Especially members of Calhoun's troop. Calhoun's troop. I sent for you to tell you the Russians won't try to break into the hills tomorrow. The wagons are going into Rapid Creek? Just after you rode out of town yesterday, Jordan called it off. He wouldn't call it off. He's got something else in mind. What's he up to? I don't know. We had a reason to. Well, don't tell me that Mr. West Point's got time for social life. Don't commanding officers believe in announcing themselves? What would you have the commanding officer do? Knock on canvas? You ready, pretty? Will you? You don't have to accept anybody's company unless you want to. I want to. What's the matter? Don't you know any treaty says I gotta keep my hands off? Captain, let me recommend the restaurant. The Iron Captain at a loss. Isn't there anything in regulations to cover this situation? Such as a strategic retreat? Regulations say that I can't get you, Jordan. But they do allow me to remove obstacles that get in my way. <laughs> hey, what's the matter, champ? We boring you? Or are you just longing for some Apaches for you to kill with your bare hands? I never had my hands on any Apaches any more than Riority there was in the war. Where's Calhoun figured a game about lions? Who are you calling a liar? Hey, wait a minute. The captain didn't say you did kill any Apaches. He just asked the sergeant if he'd ever heard of a man by the name of Emerson who had. Same with Riority. There ain't any lie in that that I can see. Maybe it's the captain's way of telling you that in his troop it ain't what a man's done. It's what he does from now on that holds water. Take each one of us. We weren't any prize catches. That is why the colonel gave us to Captain Calhoun. For with the captain, we started from scratch. Now look at this. The pride of the regiment. Nobody loved us except Calhoun. Now we are thinking of marrying Calhoun. Bertram's going to be the flower boy. Are yeah, those the lead butters over there? The ones you said came on that little yellow stuff? Yeah. I'll buy him a drink. Yeah, I didn't hear him invite you over there. Leave him alone. That's the captain's orders. Who knows better how to run this troop? You are Captain Calhoun. Well, I ain't got no argument on that point. Oh, sit down. Hey, 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 hey. What's the matter with me going with you? There? When you started to powder your nose, you'd find out. Well, I got to powder my nose. You were a lame dog face. Hey, listen. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, I'll go. Darling, sit down. You too, are my goal. Things are beginning to go a little sour. Doesn't look like I got a chance any more made to order than that. We're not answering any questions, soldier. We're not accepting drinks from anybody in Calhoun's troop. I don't like Calhoun any more than you do. You mean that? Sure. I believe you do. We may accept that drink. I heard you were supposed to be pretty good in the ring. To me, that's just a lot of talk. All right, it's just talk. That's what a man usually invents to keep from getting hurt. You know, I can always tell if a man's been in the ring by the way he blocks a punch. You want to prove you're not a liar? I don't want to prove anything. Well, you'd better, dog face. <laughs> All of us like to believe with a kind 
who can take love or leave it alone. Well, maybe it's true, but sometimes do you find you keep thinking of someone you know? Is there someone lonely for you tonight? Someone sweet from out of the past? Are there tears that fall when memories recall? Are the love you shared from heart getting glad? Is there someone waiting for your return With a heart that always is true Is there someone lonely Who longs for you only And by chance Get away from that dirty dog face <laughs> Calhoun can get any situation in hand. Too bad. If the fight had last another few minutes, you'd have really seen some fireworks. It's all here, sir, except Emmers. He was getting pretty friendly with them lead betters. Maybe they told yeah, him. I know. Take the men back to the post, Sergeant. Two's left! Home! Captain, no army? Just the two of us, Emmers. One of us is a scut that used the army for transportation to get to the hills. So he could desert and go scratching after that yellow stuff. Come down off that horse. Go ahead, play here. You sure you know what you're doing? I never did kill any Apaches. And I sure was regimental champion. I could have sent the detail for you. That way you spend most of the time the army pays you for in the guardhouse. Thoughtful of you. I figure if you realize this is going to happen to you every time you try to run up, it'll be best for both of us. I'll have a proper soldier, and you won't spend all your time in the guardhouse. Oh, that's mighty considerate. Let's get at it. It's not that way. This isn't a prize ring. Come on, come on. All right, I told you. 
You can't expect a suit to know anything about prize ring rules, and this country lad will run into one any time. Street fighting, huh? I was raised on that stuff. You'll get it the way you want it. Good. Plenty good. That doesn't mean it's gonna be a pleasure to be around with you. Just so you remember to be around. Yeah, well, this will help my memory, I guess. Jordan, Rennie, every gold rusher in town would like to get you out in these woods alone. Probably will. They know where we are now. Come on. even have been one of the riders. Well, there's a way to prove it. Canyon gonna... lover? Wrong. Not Canyon lover. Treaty lover. I'm making a serious charge. Murder. Duty sticker. Filled with honor and fair play. If I can pin this on you, you'll spend the rest of your life in prison. Standing by a treaty made by men in the government who aren't even fit to lick your boots, Captain. Snap out of it and stand up, Jordan. When? Listen to me. Men who only have one thing in common. Money. I should know. Leg Mr. Jordan from Ohio to Congress. He's got ideals, integrity. But has he got money? Money to buy the politicians? No? Then don't leg Mr. Jordan from Ohio. You're so drunk you can't even stand up. But I'm telling you to stand up, Jordan. Stand up! I winged one of those riders last night pretty badly. Let me see you move your arms, both of them, up and down. At least you weren't the one that got hit. Help me take him downstairs. Well, hey. I can handle myself. Brenny, you and these men stand up. Let better come over here. I'll put your arms out sideways. All right, now be a bird. Fly, flap your wings. That's all. Let's see how the rest of you can fly. Come on, flap them hard. You want me to be an eagle or a crow? Maybe you're going to be a pigeon. A dead one if you don't fly right. What is it? The Indian lover turned into a bird lover? Maybe I winged him worse than I thought. You hit him somewhere. Six feet underground. Or just remember this. You're never going to be rich enough to represent anybody or anything. Because the hills are not going to be opened up. As long as the patrols are kept up, yes. Once they're not, they'll be kept up. Wow. 
so the Sioux could give you a big hello. It's just a wish. I think this is disgraceful of young Mr. Cutter. Half an hour late at his own hop. What's West Point teaching these days? Certainly not manners. I don't see why the rest of us can't dance before Lieutenant Cutter arrives. Tradition, my dear. Oh, tradition, my foot. Uh, Alice, how can they call this a hub when nobody hops? I never saw a junior officer show such flagrant disregard for army customs. The more familiar I get with this kind of army custom, the more I think it stinks. Yes, Colonel. I, I'm sure it does. Um, still stink. <laughs> what are they going to start? Going to start, going to start. You in a hurry or something? You are going somewhere, Amigo? Look, this Amigo stuff. I looked it up and it's pronounced Amigo. Confederate propaganda. International world. In different countries, it is so different. Take Germany. Oh my gosh, Schnitzel. All right, everybody. I think we've waited long enough, even for a West Pointer. All right, Sergeant, let it rip. I die, die, here. <laughs> Watchdog Calhoun. <laughs> Is that one? He could have it. What do you think, Crystalhead? I think you're a fake, Nero. A migrant schnitzel. You a Spaniard, an Italian, a German, a what? Maybe I'm a Mexican. Go on, you haven't even seen Mexico. You don't have to see a place to come from. Oh. That's real bright. Real bright, real bright. Are you going to give me the thanks or not? Mind if I cut in? Well, see, and bang your brains out. You've got nothing better to do than jump out like a couple of Get over to the stable. A stable sergeant just asked me for two chambermaids. Fine party, despite young Mr. Cutter's tardiness. Yeah. I don't suppose now is the time or place to mention rumors to you. What rumors? I heard Pactol and his Sioux had broken out of the hills. I understand they're on a marauding expedition. Broken out of the hills. Give me the facts. No facts yet. Just rumor. There's some isolated ranches 20 miles east of the boundary line. Now, the way I figure, Pactola means to retaliate for those breaks into the hills. That's all I need. I can get this command started in 15 minutes. Wait a minute. It's just a rumor. Do you want to prevent the Sioux from acting up or uh, punish them after they have? I see that you're a man who also wants to see these red sticks get what they deserve. We both do. I hear, Captain, that you haven't had to run any wagons out of the hills lately. That's right. Something else must have been keeping you busy. Want to tell me what it was? Maybe it's just that the Sioux have left. Jumping G. Hush. It's my fault we're late, Colonel. I took my time dressing. I wanted to be sure everyone would be here. 
Well, you haven't missed much. Would you get me my wrap, Charles? This has suddenly become a very undesirable place to be. Yes, Mrs. Grant. Excuse me. Get my coat, too. But, Alice, we just can't up and leave. That would be rude to cut her. Rude my foot. You outrank him, don't you, Theodore? Excuse me. You can drive her back to town, seeing as the dance is ending anyway. Ending? It's only beginning, and you know it. For her kind, it's ending. Sorry. But pressure from certain female sources makes this dance off limits to Miss Wilson. Why, I, I, I'm sorry, Miss Wilson. I... I didn't know. I, I didn't mean to. Do you see them now, Wayne? The tracks? I'll take you home. Captain. She's going with me. Any objections? Join your hop, Mr. Cutter. Take it back, I'm staying. The atmosphere is cleared. Good night, Colonel. Good night? What you mean is come in and have a drink. What I mean is good night. You can have a drink at Jordan's. I don't want a drink at Jordan's. I want a drink with you. Right here, right now. What I mean is, you can have your drink at Jordan. Oh, you little... When you make a decision, you back it up. I like that. I'll have the drink at Jordan. You wanted me to make my own decision about him. Who's that? Something like that. They're very hard to convince, Wayne. Didn't my dismissal at the dance have any effect? You've only convinced me of one thing. Nothing like that at the dance would ever happen again if you'd marry me. You'd be my wife. You'd go any place on the post. If any of those turkey-faced old harpies didn't speak civilly to you, I'd... Oh, they to me, yes. And hate doing it. And behind our backs, they'd speak about us. I know you. You'd be in one constant defensive fight. Until in the end, you'd quit the service. I won't do that to you. Please go, You've made up our minds, haven't you? My mind, Webb. Repeat. Same as yesterday. No sign of rushers in this area. Cutter. Tell Lieutenant Cutter to take his patrol back to the post. Over here, Captain. Looks like Lieutenant Mason. No sign of... Never mind taking it down, Sergeant. Same thing. Tell Lieutenant Mason to take his patrol in. All this time and know nothing. It's kind of scary. Makes me almost wish I could see a Sue. One Sue. One Sue. One Sue? You demented? No, just crazy. All right, Barhite. Let's get back to the post. <laughs> Everything all right, sir? 
thought I was seeing things. Guess I need spectacles. Ten minutes out of every hour, we got to walk. I'm the one that needs the rest, not him. I won't find the walking. If it carry me. Right about there, Sergeant. Indian smoke. No brakes in it. That's a signal to gather. I'd say from all parts of the territory. Why? The wagons have tried to get in for days. Have the men mop. All right, let's ride a while. A little scared, Jello? Uh, somebody's cooking lunch. I keep telling myself. At a trot! to rest that leg. All right, Fisher. Can you remember about how many Sioux attacked your ranch or which direction they took when they rode off? All I remember is my wife lying there. My whole family gone less than 20 minutes. I shot one of them Sioux, but he rode away with the rest of them. You better come with us, Fisher. Colonel, if those savages aren't punished now, there'll be no stopping them. You don't have to tell me what to do. We can't get anywhere tonight, but at sun up tomorrow, I'll break out this whole garrison. I'll track down those red sticks, and I'd hate to be one of them when I catch up with them. You'll do a job that should have been done long ago. Don't take the patrols out of the hills. Don't what? I saw a smoke column out in patrol. The Sioux are gathering inside the hills, not outside. And what the smoke said? Didn't say anything, but that's what it means. And it could also mean some tribe breaking camp, burning its garbage. This army's gonna act like an army for a change. Those red sticks have busted that precious treaty of yours when they killed Fisher and his family. A shaved tail lieutenant was never more completely decoyed than you've been. Explain that. Good and fast. Besides your politicians, who stands to gain when the rush starts and the army and the Indians have to fight it out? One man. What you're going out on is a decoy, plain and simple, engineered by Jordan. You don't like Jordan because he's like me. He doesn't play by your rules. Well, you're crazy if you think he'd go far enough to kill a family of whites. All I know is the Sioux haven't broken out of the hills. I don't take off the patrols. There won't be any patrols to take off. This whole garrison's going with me. You think the Sioux are still in the hills? All right, you and your troops stay here and protect the post. Stay right here, you understand? I understand you've been decoyed. Like a shaved tail lieutenant. You and your troop. Right here. That's a direct order. I never knew you to disobey an order, and you'd better not disobey this one. just hit me. What just hit you, Sergeant? If that smoke we saw yesterday on patrol meant the Sioux were gathering in the hills, we're in a pretty bad spot with the whole gas and going in the opposite direction. I'm glad it hit you so soon, Sergeant. Post the guard. Yes, sir. Left forward! Forward left! Hold!
They took off toward those mountains. Well, let's get started. I ain't a cat, Colonel. I can lose those tracks at night as easy as an X-Man. Mr. Cutter. Yes, sir. We'll bivouac here until it's light. General. You jumpy? With one troop to guard the post, I'm jumpy. Well, start jumping, then, because somebody's coming. Don't stand there. Do something. Corporal the guard. Oh, Miss Wilson, you shouldn't be driving alone through the night, scaring people. What's the matter? Did the little tiny lady give the great big soldier a scare? Corporal, I must see Captain Calhoun at once. It's important. Sure, miss. Hey, how about me standing guard on the inside? You don't want to leave a good soldier out here all alone. All alone, all alone, am I, Schnitzel? In there, ma'am. I would have come sooner, but I couldn't leave Jordan without his wondering where I was going at this time of night. What's the matter? Early this evening, a wagon train pulled out for the hills. Jordan loaded it with supplies and repeating rifles. But you still might be able to catch them, Webb, if you leave now. He's counting on the Sioux to warn them back. And hit them with everything they've got when they ignore the warning. Then the war is on and the hills are wide open. But if you go out and turn the train back, there's... And at this hour, Colonel Unger remanded Captain Calhoun to the post during the commanding officer's absence. You can't go out after them. What are you going to do? Going out and try to trim those rush attack. What will this mean to you if you leave here? Court Marshal, thrown out of the service. Oh, not for disobeying this order, though. The whole system is founded on obedience. You disobey once, you're no good for the system anymore. And it's no good for you. Well, then you can't go with. You mustn't do it. This is your whole life. You couldn't breathe outside of the service. Donna. I could breathe outside the service just as well as him. Maybe that way I could have you. Are you sure it would be enough? Sir. Donna, tell Barhay to have half the troops saddled up in five minutes. All right, you sons of soldiers, hit that cold hard floor with your warm bad feet. Slap those saddles on and I want to hear them crack. Did the Sioux. They came up all Breslau. 
ordered us to turn around and get out. Ordered us. I asked you who fired first. You or the Sioux? They were looking for trouble. You or the Sioux? We fired first. We give them all the trouble they was looking for with these. Any of them get away? A couple or three. No sense going after them. You know what you've just done? You've given the families in these wagons about one hour to live. Sue have already gathered. Those three bucks are going to come down here with a force that'll run over this train like it wasn't even here. Turn around, Ledbetter. I'll try to get you back to Dawson. You ain't turning us around this time, soldier. We got what we need to take care of ourselves. We're going on. Give me those rifles. Sergeant! Now turn around. Towards that divide over there. That way they could circle around the Dawson. Come on. Say pardon, Colonel. Look. Wounded. Couldn't ride. Shot me. Never give me a chance. Who shot you? Rennie. We was to lead you away from the fort. Whose idea was this? Jordan. Decoy. Mr. Cutter, you're looking at a mule brain fool who's just been decoyed worse than a shaved tail lieutenant. Davis, is there a shorter way back to the post than the way we came? There's a shortcut, but it ain't advisable to take it with a Sioux out. They're not paid for advice. All right, you're gonna ride. You're gonna ride like you never thought you could. Any one of you scuts that don't keep up will answer to me personally when we get back to the post. Get it? Going so quick. Who figures a soup? We're gonna make a run for the post before the soup get there. Gallop! Ho! directly for the gate. Through them? If we take it by surprise, they may draw off until we're sure there are no more of us coming. Wishing you could fill up on whiskey, Mr. Riarty? I told you, whiskey don't make a man brave. It just helps him forget he's petrified. I hope one of them soldiers inside the fort's got the sand open them gates before we bust into them. Bugler, sound the charge. Oh! <laughs> 
heavy back. They're just warming themselves up for another run. We'll do all right with these. It'll take more than those the next time. We lost both boxes. Campbell says they bounced out of his wagon during the run. Repeating rifles ain't much good without ammunition. You got any extra carbines, Captain? A lot of us will be needing them. Moved them into the magazine. Over there. Bye, Hello! Right. Oh. I'm glad you're all right. Are most of them the children in the chapel? Yes, Will. Why aren't you there? Mrs. Wilson and I have been busy. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Set a charge in the powder magazine. Run a wire to a punter up in the catwalk. Yes, sir. Get all the women and children out of the chapel and into the magazine. All of them. Yes, sir. Just like that? Just a precaution. Jordan! I want to see you come through this, because I want to see you hang. On my way here, I saw Rennie and the ones with him. I... I saw them after Sue had finished with him. Can't blame all this on me. You counted on the Sioux hitting only the wagon trains. Then the war would be between the Indians and the dog faces you've come running to. Maybe you should have written a letter of instruction to the Sioux. A lot of people didn't get out of Dawson. This is no war. It's like... what you told me it would be like. No! Aren't they coming? They say they will take their chances in the chapel. Can't kind of blame them. There's no chance at all with the charge of gunpowder. One proof and you go. Get out. You shouldn't even come in here. None of you should be here either. You're disobeying Captain Calhoun's orders. Don't tell us what to If your husbands were here, they'd tell you to move to the magazine. Young woman, if we're going to die, this is the place to do it. No, it isn't. Whatever you believe about me, whether true or not, my life has been different from yours. The very life I've led makes me able to speak to you now. Because whatever I've had to put up with has been delicate compared to what you'll go through if you're captured by those savages. The magazine's where the soldiers keep the powder, isn't it, Miss Wilson? You're the Bannon girls, Jesse and Mary, aren't you? Daddy and Mother couldn't come. They're... They're still in town. The powder won't go off, will it? No, Mary. It won't go off. Well, it hurt very much if it did. No, Jesse. It wouldn't hurt at all. If you're going to the magazine, Miss Wilson, we're going too. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Mary. Well, what are we gawping around for? Let's go with Miss Wilson and the children. Is that the shortcut? Yeah, but I'm telling you not to go in. You are. They had a lookout up there. You could spot you coming ten miles away. You better go the long way around. Any other way will take us two hours to get to the post. But shut up, you. I'm giving the orders around here. I never fought any Sioux, but I won't see the day when I can't cut my way through some yelling red sticks. All right with you, Mr. Cutter. That's all right with me. Come on! Come on!
Wait a minute, Crystal Head. No. Wait. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh my gosh. They're pulling around, probably for... That's why. Tricks have got us cold. You know, lock those gates. They're not pulling out. I think they're right over the edge of that rim. Why? Hold your fire. They're not attacking. Now shoot the first man that fires. Open the gate, Sergeant. Go, give me your saber. Sir, you're not going to let them in. That's a sign for a palaver. I'm going out. But that's Sue. That don't mean nothing but a trap. I'm going with you. You'll stay here, just in case. Open the gate. Just in case you don't come back. If you don't come back, there won't be any case. Remember Pactola at Laramie Council? I remember. You are one who has not forgot the treaty. Take your warriors, your women, and your children, and go free from the fort. Go at once, Calhoun. You will go to the east, away from the hills. I will take the trail Pactola has told me to. Yes, sir. 
But the Black Hills were no longer still. They'd come alive with the sound of the war whoop that started with the Battle of the Little Big Horn and sought for 14 years to drown out the voice of the bugles. It's Colonel Calhoun now. There are eagles on his shoulders. He earned them at Powder River, war bonnet, wounded knee in the Battle of White Clay Creek. It's hard to say that one man had the great integrity to prevent the deaths of many men he'd been listened to. But I've always thought so. And I will always go on with my thoughts unchanged. Oh, no, 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 no,